Hi peeps, welcome back to my channel. I've got this video for you. It is an old video, so it's not kind of the new shapes that I do on my nails, but the old style. Still worth a watch though, I think. You may disagree, that's fine. But I thought I'd upload it anyway. So what I'm doing now, I'm actually doing my um, infill. So what I've done is taken off um, the design that I had on which was the green and khaki one that you can still see on my other hand so I filed back down to the clear layer and now I'm just infilling with clear because I'm going to be using polishes, some gel polish on this set Anywho, so yes I'm just doing my infill now you'll notice that my nails will look a bit thick. There's a reason for that. If you look carefully, you'll see that my nail beds, my natural nail beds, are actually really high. They're not flat at all. They're very high and very curved. So once I put the acrylic on top, it makes it look like I've put tons of acrylic on, but I haven't. It's just my natural nail beds are actually really high. And you'll see how especially my index finger how much it curves down <coughs> excuse me so it doesn't matter how I put a tip on or whether I sculpt by within a couple of weeks my nail starts to sort of go downwards grow downwards so you'll notice when I come to the index finger that I start building up the tip and the reason I do this is so that when it comes to filing I actually file underneath the the free edge the tip of the nail very end I file underneath it sort of counteract the curvature of the, the growing down so it brings it up a little bit straighter it's not going to be perfectly straight but it will make it less of a dip you'll see what I mean when I come to filing but I'm building it up now so you should kind of twig what I'm doing Sorry I'm so croaky today, croaky, more frogs, <laughs> if you watched the last video you'll know what I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm a wally, I know I'm a wally, that's just me, what can I say, <laughs> so I've left a little bit of everything in this video, a bit of the um, infill, I'm sorry I'm saying um, that's so annoying, Bit of the infill, bit of the filing, bit of everything, but not all of everything, if you know what I mean. Here we are with the filing, it's the usual red wool, free edge, and then I'll go around with my e file, my cuticle. Well, it's not really a cuticle bit, it's just a, a, a very small slender cone-shaped bit that I use and I go around the cuticle area with that just to make sure it's all nice and with blush and there's no step, we don't want any steps because that's really annoying. No steps allowed. Pretty self-explanatory, so I'll probably leave you to watch this. Um, you will notice when I get to the index finger that I will file underneath, like I said. Just, just bring that curve up a bit so it doesn't curve down quite so far. I have very funny shaped nails when naturally grow. They, they curve so much. It's crazy. But my index fingers are probably the worst ones and then my little fingers they grow pretty curved too but the, the ones that grow the most curved definitely my index fingers for some reason I think it's hereditary because my mum's nails grow curved too it's got to be genetics Make it last forever. Stop 
in with the good old hand file now to just refine that shape make sure everything's nice and contoured and smooth and there are no harsh edges yeah has to be done nice smooth curve no flat bits nice and rounded over the top nice straight side walls there's a nice straight free edge that's the shape I'm going for there's a tapered square and I'm just cleaning underneath my nails with a this is supposed to be a cuticle bit but I find it too harsh to be a cuticle bit I think it's too coarse but it's really good for cleaning underneath the nails I'm just showing you what colours I'll be using in gel polish this one's a thermal one so it changes colour I do like my thermals first coat of colours going on and you'll be able to see that it's changing colour oh love it love it love it you'll see that where my nail bed is it's gone sort of well it's, it's pink light really really light pink because of the heat I just love thermals I just think they're magic I've got a thing about them you probably noticed that <laughs> And the glittery one is really sparkly. I do like that one too. And I like this one also that I'm using. <laughs> this dark one. I like them all. I like them all. Really good coverage on this dark one actually. Could probably get away with one coat. It's really, really pigmented. Quite impressed with that. But I still will do another coat because that's just the way I am. Two coats of gel polish always. Going around with my clean up brush as usual because I'm a messy polisher and I like my polish to be neat. A quick swish around with the alcohol and a little brush. Bob's your uncle, you've got neat lines and none on your skin. So I cured that first layer for 30 seconds and I'm going in with my second layer now. I don't cap the free edge on the first layer. I cap it on the second layer. Gel polish has a tendency to be thicker than normal polish and you will easily lose the shape of your nails because they are quite thick. So on if you cap on the first coat as well as the second coat, I find that you, you, you will lose the shape really, really badly. I mean, even on just capping on the second coat, you still lose the shape of it, to be honest. But that's just the thing about gel, gel polish. Unless you don't cap, you will lose the shape a bit. They will be rounded off a little bit. And then I will cap with the top coat as well so yeah it does sort of add up all those layers so into the tacky layer I'm putting in some of this lovely lovely gold leaf that's really pretty that stuff I'm using my silicone tool to just push all the bits flat and now I'm going to have a fight with striping tape. Oh my giddy on, this stuff drove me insane. I had proper, proper fight with this stuff. So frustrating. Why is striping tape so hard? Unless you're encapsulating it into your acrylic or hard gel, it is such a pain in the backside. Then you go to put your top coat on. Blooming stuff tries to lift. So I had to use, in the end, I had to use glue on just the edges to hold them down so that when I put my top coat on, they didn't lift. 
before I could get my hand in the lamp. Oh, the frustration. The struggle is real, people. If you've never used striping tape, you won't know what I'm talking about. But if you have used striping tape, you will know exactly what I mean. The struggle is real. It's so real. I mean, I could have cut this out of the video, the, the fighting with the striping tape, but I thought I'd leave it in because people seem to think that doing nails is easy and there's no skill to it, but there really is. There's skill, there's knack, there's knowing what you're doing, there's a lot of education, but striping tape, even the most seasoned professionals have trouble with striping tape. And I wanted to leave that in because a lot of newbies have trouble with striping tape and they think they're the only ones that do. You're not. You're not the only ones. A lot of people have trouble with striping tape. It's just the way that that stuff is. They just don't make them sticky enough. And yeah, well, I thought I'd leave my struggles in so you can have a laugh at me. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad that bit's over. <laughs> I've top coated, I've let it cool down, and I'm going with my cuticle oil, and I am done, 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 done. I used the matte coat on the thumb and the middle finger because I wanted those two nails to be matte but what I actually did was take a little striping brush and I went over the striping tape with normal top coat, no wipe top coat so that, that bit actually was shiny so that the glitter of the striping tape showed through on the matte nail. Bye for now!